We're very pleased to have Microsoft Bing Maps be a sponsor of ISV Partner Day. And in this on-demand webinar, we'll be shown how to get started with Bing Maps. The webinar is presented by Justine Coates, Senior Program Manager, and Peter Brazil, Program Manager, both working from Microsoft Seattle in the USA. Thank you, Julia. Uh, Peter and I, we both work for a team called the Customer Advisory Team, and we our, our reason to exist is to help customers get started with Bing Maps and to, and to assist in any technical issues you may have. Today, we're going to focus on what it means to be part of the Bing Maps platform, the things you might want to know about it, and how you try it before you buy it, and how to keep in touch with gray matter. So first, one of the things that I run into all the time is that people don't know the difference between Bing Maps and Bing Maps for Enterprise or the Bing Maps platform. Bing Maps is the site that you use to go and look up stuff and Bing and where things are, and you can access it from anywhere in the world off of any browser. But the Bing Maps platform is a developer accessible geospatial platform allowing you to add map and location services to your application. And I'm going to show you today how very easy that is. Now, why would you choose Bing Maps? Well, we have over 20 years of experience creating mapping platforms for Microsoft. Inside Microsoft, if you use anything that has a map in it, chances are it's a Bing Map or at least Bing map location data in the back end. You might also notice that when you're calling our APIs, they still say virtual earth in the, in the path. And that's because we are building on all that experience and as we continue to move forward today. But one of the things is our platform, in order to cover the world, we use many different data sources. So. One of the challenges that we solve is how to blend that specific mix of data to provide this worldwide experience. So what you should know to get started, Microsoft.com slash maps is, uh, is the place to go. It has all of the information that you need that will, will come off of that site. But even more than that, when if you run into any trouble, you can get in touch with Gray Matter or our support team to help you with any issues you have with adoption of our platform. We're here to help. Now, one of the questions that I get asked is our bandwidth. And if you have a uh, hundreds of thousands of geocodes you need to do and uh, and you're going to you think you might end up exercising our platform I have to let you know today we are the platform behind bing.com so not only will we serve your needs but we serve millions of transactions per second for in order to support that bing.com experience so, for example, when you're searching for something in Bing and you're like a pizzeria, you don't want a pizzeria that's in Napoli. You want a pizzeria that's down the street. That is actually involving a location service that is used, that is from the Bing Maps platform. So, if Microsoft in that kind of volume can rely on our Bing Maps platform, so can you. So next, I would encourage you to try this at home. Remember I said that try before you buy? Bing Maps has an interactive SDK that you can use without even creating an account. That account, uh, that, that, that has its own account basically that allows you to run and rerun code in our web API and 
give it a sh- give it a shot without even giving us any details about yourself. When you do want to move further forward, you can look at understanding the Bing Maps transaction. It's an easy search in our in our website Bing, and it's also a fantastic jump off place for finding out best practices and access to our samples. So at this point, I'd like to jump over to a demo of using that uh, that interactive SDK. Just a moment. So our main page for this interactive SDK gives you an overview of how it works, including right in the cent- center, you see this little green button. That little green button tells you that when you press it, you can run and see how the code has changed how the sample behaves. So I'm going to go to the left menu and take a look at a simple sample, like creating a push pin and setting the color of that default push pin. So you'll see that in this sample, the push pin is red. If I just take that word red out and type blue and then press run, you'll see the pin turn to blue. You might also notice in this sample that the map is showing Vancouver, and that's because that's where I am located now. The default behavior of our maps control is to take whatever location is in your system and use that for the start of the map. However, you can change that default location as you see fit. So for my next trick, I'm going to show you how to do how easy it is to do a ground overlay. This sample shows an overlay of all of the counties in the United States, and it literally is an image laid over top of a Bing map. (coughs) With that in mind, I'm going to change that image so that you can see how First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a Microsoft logo over the Microsoft campus. And to do that, I'm going to do a Bing search to find an image of the Microsoft logo. Like this. So you'll see nothing up my sleeve. Here is a simple image of the Microsoft logo. From there, I'm going to take the location of the Microsoft campus, which is at 47 North minus 122. Go to the ground overlay. I'm going to change that location. I'm also going to zoom in a little closer as we're at zoom level four and I want to see the campus, so I'm going to set that to zoom level 15. And then I'm going to take that logo that we found. I'm going to place it instead of the one here. And then I'm going to press run. And there you go. So this, I mean, I work in Seattle, so I recognize this campus very easily. (laughs) But you'll see that I now have the logo on top of the Microsoft campus beside 520 in Redmond, Washington. Thank you very much. Now, once you have this concept, you'll see how easy it was to put an overlay over top of one of our maps. Beyond that, you can get a lot more complicated. You can use this to to superimpose floor plans, 
any other kind of uh, detail that you wish to show on a location or uh, an entity on a map. With that in mind, I'm going to show you the sample that I made for the Seattle Woodland Park Zoo. You'll notice that this shows the same map, the same Bing map, but with an overlay. Now, if I take the opacity, you'll see that's what the map looks like without the overlay. I can make that, I can add that graphic in with as much or as little depth of uh, coverage to show the map through it as I wish. So you can see right here. There it goes away. And here's what it looks like fully on. And that will cover the paths underneath it. So I like to put it somewhere in between so that I can still see the paths running through each of the areas in the in in, in the uh, location. Lastly, I do want to show you that same location if you were to find it on our mapping platform, our, our customer mapping platform. You'll notice the same behavior of that same web control inside uh, inside the Bing experience also puts me in Vancouver. And if I go to the Woodland Park Zoo, you'll see that same location, but without my overlay. With that, let's go back to our slides. So I hope that helped you understand how you can easily try the platform without any commitment whatsoever, not even giving us your name. And our demo included the Bing Maps Interactive SDK, showed you to explore the left menu, find out more interesting things to do, set something basic, Get get yourself a sense of accomplishment just by changing the color of a push, push pin. You can see how it's very easy to accomplish things, even things that are more challenging, like sticking the the map for a zoo over top of that map. And you should be able to answer pretty much any scenario using that interactive SDK. But one of the things that I wanted to point out is again, start at microsoft.com slash maps and find out that web is only one of the platforms that we offer. We offer UWP, WPF, iOS, Android, and more for targets for your application. And at this point, I'd also like to point out that you can contact your hosts and our hosts at Gray Matter at mapping at Gray Manor whenever you need any help with licensing or support. With that, are there any questions? Hi, Justine. Hi, Justine. Uh, it looks really easy to get started, which seems a compelling reason to use Bing Maps. What are the other reasons why developers would want to develop with the platform? Well, one of the one of the key uh, benefits of the Bing platform is that it blends so well into the Microsoft environment. We pretty much any tool set that you would like to use, or any um, Dynamics 365, Office 365, or any other Microsoft-based platform. If you're going to put a map in your SharePoint, it's very easy to use a Bing map. Hey, note also that those solutions use that same web control that I just demoed. So you have all the power of that 
uh, web platform across many different solutions at Microsoft. And thanks for the question, Mark. No um, problem, thank you. With, with people using mobile phones so often these days, um, can you develop apps for mobile phones with Bing Maps? Absolutely, and that's a great question, Julia. Uh, one of the, there's actually two methods to uh, use our maps on a mobile phone. One is to leverage the web control and use that in a cross-platform solution, so something that's available through a web experience. The other is to build something based on our new native map controls. And again, you can find those off of Microsoft.com uh, slash maps, but we have both an iOS and an Android control that you can blend into your iOS or Android experience. Thanks, Justine. Um, I was also wondering about using it for routing or um, logistics. So that's another great question. Now, I talked about actually building an application experience with a map control, but we do have a rich set of REST APIs that you can then represent on the map. So for example, for the routing question that you have, you could call our REST Routes API with the data points that you want stopped at and then render the results, which come back in as either JSON or XML at, at your choice, and place those on whatever respective map control you have chosen to use, whether that be web, iOS, Android, or Windows. But that is a great question, Julia. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Are there any more questions? Justine, can you tell us a bit about what the spatial data services are? I could, but I'm going to actually pass that to my uh, my coworker and friend, Peter Brazil, as he does a lot of work with the data team. Peter, can you talk about spatial data services? Yeah, hello. Uh, thanks for the question, Mark. Um, so with Spatial Data Services, what you can do is that you can upload your own uh, data set, be it, for instance, if you're a retailer, you can upload your storage location. Uh, and with that, you can always come back to that API. We store that for you in an endpoint that is private to you. So only you can access that through, your, through the APIs, through a key system. And uh, you can embed that in your application, be it a website, be it uh, an app, whatever you need. Beyond that, we have some public data sets that you can always use to overlay with your data as well. And lastly, you can make your own data public so others can use that if you prefer to do so. I think, Peter, we also had a recent uh, announcement around uh, a POI data set. Yes, we did. Uh, so we recently, through new partnerships, as we always do with Bing Maps, acquired licenses to serve to our customers a new set of uh, AP, uh, POIs. So you can always connect to our uh, POI service to uh, get a listing of points of interest for the US, England, wherever you may need, because it's an international database that uh, we can serve for you. This is a, a really great new addition because it also has that separation that we were talking about with the identifiers that says uh, essentially I'm looking for a restaurant or I'm looking for a keyword such as pizza. You can use this same data set in so many different ways. Exactly. That's a great question, Mark. Thank you. And uh, if there's no other questions, I'd like to end by thanking Gray Matter for an, uh, including Bing Maps in, in their ISV day. And also, again, pointing out this get in touch to find out more and emailing mapping at graymatter.com should you need any more information regarding Bing Maps. And thank you. Thank you very much, Justine, and thank you, Peter. It's been great having you sponsors for ISV Partner Day.